everyone, today's video is the highly anticipated Seattle food tour part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, definitely go check it out. It has so many great restaurants and I definitely don't want you guys to miss out on those. Before we get into the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video because that really helps me know that you guys like videos like this and you wanna see more of them. So without further ado, let's get into the Seattle food tour part two. So for our first stop of the day, we are at Kadai Makan. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but it's basically like a Malaysian restaurant. So we ordered a few dishes, but first they brought out this coconut shake. It's actually part of their dessert menu, but I guess we're starting with dessert today. Whoa. It's like so coconutty, but also it has like a saltiness to it. Very smooth, very coconutty. It's like sweet, but salty as well. I've never had a shake like this before. Yeah. The liquid part, it's actually quite liquidy. Yeah. Like it's not like a thick shake that you're struggling to suck up the straw, but it has such a complex flavor. All right, our side just came and we got the roti jala, which is net bread with flour, egg, turmeric, coconut, and your choice of chickpea curry or chicken curry. We chose the chickpea curry because we're getting chicken curry in one of our other dishes. This is a, such a cool like texture. It definitely looks fun to eat. <laughs> mm. Wow, it's incredibly light and fluffy. The netting texture is so interesting and indeed fun to eat. And then it soaks up that nice flavor of the chickpea curry. It has like a coconut flavor to it and it's a little tiny bit spicy. I wouldn't really say it's very spicy. It has like a tiny, 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 tiny hint of spice. Fun to eat, super flavorful, just delicious. Next up, we have the nasi lemak. It's Malaysia's national dish and it comes with coconut rice, tea egg, roast peanuts, anchovies, lime leaf, cucumber, nasi lemak sambal, mee sambal and chicken curry. I'm gonna grab some chicken with rice and sambal. Mm. Mm. The chicken is nice and tender. Definitely has a nice aromatic curry flavor. And then the rice, since it's the coconut rice, it's actually sweet. The sambal adds a nice level of spice. It's nothing like super, super spicy, but it adds a little bit of kick there. This dish has like everything you need. You have some sweetness from the rice. You have the aromatic curry, some spiciness from the sambal, crunch from the peanuts, and then a light refreshingness from the cucumbers. And I love a jammy egg. So everything just works super well together. Then we also got the chili pan mi, which has wheat noodles with ground pork, pork, anchovies, shiitake mushrooms, scallions, yu choy, poached egg, fried shallots, and a sambal. Also, look at that jiggly egg on top. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Let's break this egg. Oh, look at that runny, creamy egg yolk. All right, let's mix it all together. Look at that. Those noodles are steaming. All right, let me get a manageable bite. <laughs> Those noodles are so nice and chewy and they hold on to the flavors so, so well. The ground pork in this actually reminds me a lot of like Chinese zhajiangmian, the ground pork that they use in that dish. I am getting a good amount of heat, not enough to sweat, but my taste buds are definitely tingling. <laughs> I am a chewy noodle girl through and through, so these are definitely hitting the spot. Mm. taking a little break, but we did pick up some pastries from Bakery Nouveau. And actually, I heard about this place from you guys on my last Seattle videos. A bunch of you were recommending Bakery Nouveau to me in the comments, so that's why I figured we have to try it. I picked up their twice-baked almond croissant, and this thing is hefty. It's like huge, look at that. On the inside, you can see there's some of that almond paste, I wanna call it. 
Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh my god. What is this sorcery? It is so, so buttery and sweet and flaky. There's like this crystallized sugariness to it. So many layers. It has a nice crisp on the outside. That's definitely one of the best things we've eaten so far on this trip. All right, let's try their Queen Amon. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, so don't come for me in the comments, but let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. This one has that same flakiness, butteriness, sugariness, but this one is actually a lot more fluffy and it has more layers. Like that one is kind of flat. This one, you can see all those little air pockets in between the flaky dough. They definitely know how to do their pastries. I mean, they're very buttery and sweet, but it tastes so, so good. to Pike Place Market and our first stop is of course the iconic Pike Place Chowder and they serve lots of different kinds of chowder. They have New England clam chowder, Manhattan style clam chowder, seared scallop chowder, but I personally like to stick to the classic New England clam chowder and this place has so many awards for good reason. The chowder is incredible. Mm. It's so creamy, but it's not super, super dense. Of course, it is a cream-based soup, so it is heavy, but at the same time, it's definitely lighter than some other chowders I've had. So rich and smooth, and you get all these different textures with the potato, the chewy clams, and they give you free pieces of sourdough to soak up your clam chowder with. And the sourdough that they use here is super good. Just hopped over a few doors down to Rachel's Ginger Beer. This place is super duper famous. They have multiple locations and they serve lots and lots of different flavors of ginger beer. If you guys have been here for a while, you would know that I absolutely hate ginger. However, these don't really taste super gingery in my opinion. So it's like bearable. Like it adds a little hint of like that ginger spice, but it's not super strong on the ginger flavor. Here we have their frozen strawberry rhubarb. It's a seasonal flavor. And I'll be honest, the only reason I ordered this one is because it's the only one that they had a frozen version of that wasn't alcoholic. Oh. Sour. <laughs> wow, that's really tart. It reminds me of a Sour Patch Kids. Oh yeah? A little bit. That's your favorite candy, right? So yeah. you like it? If it was a little sweeter, I think I would really like it. You need it. more sugar. Yeah. And then we also got their float option. So you can have any of their ginger beer flavors and add some ice cream on top. We got the vanilla ice cream, but they also have a Dole Whip option. And the flavor we got is their caramelized pineapple ginger beer. This is quite nice, actually. The ice cream makes the ginger beer quite like frothy and creamy, and the caramelized pineapple flavor does come through. I really like this one. stop in Pike Place Market is Beecher's Cheese and they're of course very well known for their cheese. They have so many different kinds. They even have a window where you can literally see them making the cheese while you're visiting. The most popular items here are their grilled cheeses and their mac and cheese which is my personal favorite. So I saw that today they're having a special sausage mac and cheese so I decided to give that a try. Bird's got his lactate ready. <laughs> Pro tip, if you're lactose intolerant like Bird, make sure to have some lactate because this is really rich cheese. Mm, the sausage is so meaty and savory and smoky too. There's a little bit of a kick to it, which is nice because the mac and cheese also has a little bit of red pepper, so it matches the flavor profile really nicely. The cheesy flavor is so creamy and rich and umami, and they also use penne pasta so that those ridges can hold onto the cheese sauce really well. Sometimes our Costco actually sells these big boxes of Beecher's mac and cheese in the frozen section, and so a lot of times we'll get that and then we'll add kimchi to it, and that is oh, so good.
We walked over to the Queen Anne area because we wanted to try Paju, which is a small restaurant serving up a modern take on classic Korean food. Their plates are smaller, so it's kind of like a tapas style where you order a variety of things to try. We started off with the yellowtail, as recommended by our server, and let me tell you, me and Bird are not usually the kind of people who go for more upscale dining, but this was incredible. The tender yellowtail paired together with the bright flavors, it was so light and refreshing and citrusy, we both loved it. So shout out to our server for the recommendation. We also got the asparagus, which came with orange, mulberry wine emulsion, and pollock roe. The asparagus was crunchy and the flavors paired nicely together. Moving on to the star of the show, the Paju fried rice. It had kimchi, bacon, squid ink, and smoked quail egg. This blew us away. The rice was perfectly cooked where you could feel the texture of each grain of rice and it had so much savory umami flavor. The squid ink brought a seafood note and the bacon brought smokiness. There was also creaminess from the quail egg and crunch from the kimchi. Then came the dakboki, which upon first glance reminded me a lot of Shanghai rice cakes. Usually when I order Korean dakboki, it's in those longer thick noodles and not like this thin oval shape, so I was really curious. Since these rice cakes had more surface area, they got really crispy, which added a nice contrast in texture to the chewiness. Overall, this dish was alright, but the fried rice and the yellowtail were definitely the highlights of the night. food day. We're at one of my favorite dessert spots in Seattle called Nana's Green Tea. Although usually we visit earlier in the day and so we can get their matcha stuff. But right now it's like 8.30 and if I drink matcha right now, I'm not going to be able to sleep. So I got something less caffeinated. We actually got their hojicha warabi mochi parfait. On the bottom, there's some hojicha jelly and syrup. I believe there's soft serve, then cornflakes, hojicha ice cream, red bean paste, warabi mochi, and some whipped cream and syrup. Oh my god, this is the strongest hojicha flavor ice cream I've ever had. The flavor is just so deep. By the way, if you guys don't know, hojicha is roasted green tea. And so it has such a like unroasted nutty flavor to it. It's creamy, it's not too sweet, just pure perfection. Let's try one of their pieces of warabi mochi. Mm. Mm. It's covered in soybean powder. So the first taste that hits your tongue is that nuttiness from the soybean powder. But then when you chew down, you get this really nice, like almost jelly-like mochi. It's not quite the same as like normal mochi. So this one is kind of like a cross between a jelly and a mochi, but it's so good. This is just the perfect way to end the night. Mm. Today, we are exploring Bellevue. I've always wanted to make it out here, but every time we go to Seattle, we never rent a car. So it's kind of far, but luckily I have my friend Nazelle driving me around today. <laughs> and so we're gonna explore a bunch of different places in Bellevue. First up, we are at Semicolon Cafe, and they specialize in these egg sandwiches. The one that I ordered is their lox. It has scrambled eggs, grilled corn, green leaf lettuce, smoked salmon, red onion on a toasted brioche bread, topped with yogurt dill sauce. Cheers. <laughs> Mmm, mm. the bread is nicely toasted and the egg is so, so fluffy. I love how fluffy the egg is. The salmon is nicely smoked and the dill yogurt sauce complements it super, super well. I love the classic combo of the lox with onions. Literally so, so good. You get that fresh crunch from the lettuce, fluffy scrambled eggs, smoked salmon, and the toasted brioche all in one bite. The perfect breakfast sandwich. Mm. Now we are at Chicha San Chin. 
I hope my Chinese did that justice. Basically, this is a boba place from Taiwan. They really focus on their quality of teas and also they give their drinks in these cute little like, it's like a boba carrier. <laughs> it's so, so cute. I got the green tea with cream, which is basically like a milk tea and I added boba to it. And here you have an option to add cream or fresh milk. And a common misconception about milk tea is that it's made with milk, but typically it's actually made with cream or creamer. So let's give this a mix. Definitely has a nice tea flavor. It's like creamy, but not too overly creamy either. And I got normal sweetness, and this one is actually not too sweet. The boba is nice and chewy and bouncy. It's pretty good boba texture. Really, really strong tea flavor. Mm. Coffeeholic House and they just opened in Bellevue. So I ordered their Coffeeholic Dream, which has coffee, condensed milk, hazelnut syrup, and cheese foam. But I subbed the cheese foam for their ube foam. And I also ordered their ube drizzle on top as well. Just look how pretty it is. So purple. This is so nice. That ube foam on top is so thick and creamy. So you get a layer of that first and then you get the Viet coffee on the bottom, which is nice and sweet, has a strong coffee flavor. Oh wow, it has like almost a chocolatey taste to it. I think it's from the hazelnut syrup. This one's really good. Mm. We are at Supreme Dumpling, and a lot of you guys recommended this to me for their shallow bows, and I'm really excited because I saw that they have spicy pork shallow bows, and I've only ever seen that at one of my favorite shallow bow places in SF. So I'm so excited to try their version. But first, let's start off with the classic pork shallow bow. Look at that dumpling sag. Oh, that's how you know it's gonna be good. The skin looks nice and thin, but not too thin where it's super fragile and breaks easily. So I'm gonna dip it in my vinegar and chili oil. Mmm, surprisingly a lot of juice. Wow, that's really good. It definitely holds a good amount of soup, and I love how the skin, it's thin and a bit chewy, but it doesn't break super easily. Like, one of the worst things when you're eating shell and ball is when you pick it up and it breaks and all the soup comes out. That is not the case here. The pork inside is also very decently tender and fatty. Now it's time for the spicy one. Woo! Ooh, this one is also very soupy and it does pack some heat. It has like a Sichuan like mala flavor to it and the pork again is fatty and tender, melts in your mouth. It goes so well with that hot spicy mala flavor. Both of the shallow balls that we got were really good. Then we also ordered their spicy pork wontons. Mm. The skin is nice and silky and it does a good job encasing all that pork filling. The spicy pork shallow bao is way spicier than the spicy pork wonton. We got this fried pork chop, kind of similar to like the Din Tai Fung one. Mm. Mm. The fried pork chop has a nice crisp on the outside, but very tender on the inside, like not chewy or tough at all. It has a really great seasoning on the outside. It's like a salt and pepper kind of flavor. Mm.
Okay, we are at Xi'an Noodles in the University District. This is yet another hand-pulled noodle place. As you guys can tell, I can't get enough of hand-pulled noodles. I was really excited because this one has spicy cumin lamb dry noodles, which is my absolute favorite from Xi'an Famous Foods in New York. Oh my gosh, look at these noodles. They're so long. You can tell they're coated in that chili and they're unevenly shaped. So that's how you know they're hand-pulled with love. Did you see how long that noodle was? And I still have this much left. These are so perfectly springy and chewy and bouncy. I like how these are more elastic-y. Sometimes hand noodles can be too doughy, so they're kind of on the tougher side, but these are really nice and chewy. Let's try some of the lamb. Mm, not bad, has a lot of flavor. And this one is surprisingly not too spicy. It has a little tingliness to it, but I'm not like breaking a sweat or anything. So it's a nice level of spice, like comfortable. Refreshing. A lot of times, wintermelon is too sweet, but this one's not too sweet. I think the oolong kind of balances it out, and the boba texture is actually pretty good. I wish it was sweeter. Oh god. <laughs> good tea flavor. Wait, though. no, it's like a good level of sweetness. That's good. That's good. I just like sweet. I just like it when it's sweet. You know how most Asians like not too sweet? Bird is the absolute opposite. He's like no such thing as too sweet. <laughs> at Fremont Bowl in the Fremont area. So the first time we ever tried Fremont Bowl was about four years ago and we just love their chirashi don. Basically it's just like assorted fish over rice. You can see there's some unagi, salmon, shrimp, yellowtail, and tuna. Salmon looks really nice and fatty. I'm gonna dip it in some soy sauce, grab it with some rice, and let's give it a try. That salmon literally melts in your mouth. The slices are on a little bit of the thinner side, but I still think it's a good deal for all this fish and rice for less than $20. Let's try the yellowtail. Mm. Mm. Yellowtail, also really solid. Very smooth and fresh tasting. And then Bird ordered their Maguro Don. It's soy marinated tuna over rice. Mm. Since the tuna was marinated, it does have a nice like savory flavor that pairs really well with the rice. I think it's because the tuna isn't as melt in your mouth as the salmon and the yellowtail, so I prefer those cuts here.
officially our last day in Seattle. So we're gonna take it pretty easy today, but our first stop is here at Seattle Fish Guys, which I've been meaning to try for so, so long. So many people recommended this place to me as well. So I knew that I had to try it before I left this time. Here I got their poke bowl with three different kinds of poke. We have shoyu tuna, spicy salmon, and spicy tuna with white rice and seaweed salad. Let's try the shoyu tuna first. Mmm, wow. On this whole trip, this is probably some of the best tuna we've had. The other one being the tuna at Sushi Nori. But what I've noticed by trying a lot of different sushi places in Seattle is a lot of the time the tuna isn't as good as like the salmon and the yellowtail, but this tuna is actually really good. Mmm, mm. so smooth and buttery. Really nicely marinated as well. Let's try the salmon poke. Mmm, mmm. The salmon is also good, very fatty, and it has good flavor too. But I actually think I prefer the flavor of the tuna more. Still really good though, and definitely really big chunks of fish, which I love. Now let's try the spicy tuna. Mmm, mmm. Creamy, spicy, such good flavor, and that melty tuna. It's so buttery. Mmm. Mm. Then I also saw some spam musubi at the cash register and I just couldn't resist so we got some to try. They're so nice and warm still. Mm. Mm. Spam is so so salty so you really need that rice to complement it. What a great start to our last day in Seattle. You always have been So we were really lucky and our friend Nizel went to wait in line at the flower box and bring us some of their donuts. So I'm so glad that we're getting to try the flavors they have this time. They always rotate the flavors. This one is the vanilla bean. It feels so like soft and fluffy, like a sugary pillow. <laughs> Whoa, oh my gosh, look at that. The filling, it looks so smooth. Mmm, soft, fluffy, a little crisp on the outside, and the cream is so, so smooth. Really nice vanilla bean flavor as well. Next, let's try the strawberry cream. Let's break this apart. Look at that filling. It's like a light pale pink color. Mmm, it has a really nice like fresh, subtle strawberry flavor, and it actually has a flavor resembling like strawberry yogurt. This one definitely has like a lighter vibe to it. Next, let's try the blueberry cheesecake. <sighs> Oh my gosh, look at that purpley filling. Oh my God, I love the color. It's beautiful. Mmm, whoa. This one took me by surprise because I got like a lemony flavor to it. I definitely get like a little tartness, which is actually nice. Maybe it's from like the cream cheese cheesecake thing, but really good actually. Definitely brightens the donut up. And then last but not least, we have the coffee salted caramel. This one I'm actually the most excited for. So hopefully we save the best for last. Whoa. Oh, you can see like the little specks. I feel like that's from the coffee. Mmm. Wow, I feel like out of all the flavors, this one definitely has the most like complexity to it. You definitely taste the coffee, but it's also not super overpowering flavor. And then you get the like subtleties of the salted caramel as well, but it's also not super overpowering salted caramel. So it's like a lot going on, but they work together really, really well. And it just has this like complex flavor to it. For our last meal, we had to stop by Musong after hearing so much about their delicious Filipino food. We were so excited and ordered a variety of dishes to try. Seeing two types of lumpia on the menu, we had to try both the veggie and the pork, and I definitely preferred the pork lumpia between the two. We also ordered the fried chicken, which was so crispy and juicy and succulent, and that flavor from the gravy made it extra umami. The lechon was really nice and crispy as well. I absolutely loved the crunch on the skin. This was my first time trying yellow adobo, which is made with a turmeric coconut adobo sauce and had an acidic slash sour mustard taste. I wasn't really used to that, so it wasn't my favorite, but I did enjoy the tenderness and lamb flavor. We had to get the short rib kare kare, which had a rich, velvety, savory sauce with a strong peanut flavor, and the meat literally just fell off the bone. It was so tender. I really enjoyed how comforting this was, especially when paired with their garlic rice, which you really can't go wrong with. Moving on to dessert, we ordered the karaoke, which are sweet rice balls with jackfruit, served with caramel, and the corn babinka, which reminded me a lot of butter mochi, so safe to say I loved that one. Overall standouts were the fried chicken, short rib, and babinka. That concludes our Seattle 2023 series. Please let me know in the comments which places I should try out next time, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!